before we start, I have a confession to make. I don't really care that much about food. I care more about people, about saving lives and improving health and well-being. I care about basic human rights, like clean air, fresh water, a place to live, and a decent job to go to. I care about equal opportunities, no matter who you are or where you were born. And I care about creating a brighter future, not just for some, but for everyone, everywhere. Food is, directly or indirectly, linked to all the sustainable development goals. A transformation to healthy diets and sustainable production can switch food from being a driver of global challenges to becoming a key solution to tackle them. We are here today because together we can help unlock that potential. So, your Royal Highness, your Excellencies, partners and friends, a warm welcome to the Eat Stockholm Food Forum. When we hosted the first forum back in 2014, our holistic approach to food, health and sustainability was not exactly mainstream. But in just three years' time, it has become widely accepted that food system challenges should and must be tackled together. Now, a growing number of scientists, policymakers and business leaders are looking for more in-depth and integrated answers. Already, we've got more knowledge than just a few years ago. But still, there are no consensus how future food systems can deliver healthy diets to a growing population within the planetary boundaries. One year ago, 20 world-leading experts in nutrition, environmental sciences and policy met in a room right upstairs. Many of you are here today. That was the initial meeting of the EAT Lancet Commission. Since then, with the support from numerous institutions across the globe, they have been assessing and synthesizing the best existing knowledge on the links between food, planet and health. The report will be published in a special edition of The Lancet next spring. It will bring us one step closer towards scientific consensus and evidence-based targets for a food system that delivers on all the global goals. And it's not just in science that things are gaining momentum. The United Nations has declared this the decade of action on nutrition and placing sustainable, resilient food systems at the heart of the policy agenda for world leaders. And governments are taking steps towards linking what people need to eat to what is actually produced. For instance, Norway, my home country, just launched its first integrated plan for better diets, signed by eight ministers and one of them will be here today. Indonesia is taking on regional challenges. This October, they will be co-hosting the first EAT Forum in the Asia-Pacific. And cities, building on the Milan Urban Food Policy Pact, are now sharing best practice from improving diets to reducing food waste through the EAT C40 network. And in the private sector, lots is happening. Innovation is flourishing. The tech community is redefining future food with smart investors supporting their smart solutions. And food companies, big and small, 
are turning challenges into business opportunities through collaborations like the Fresh program. And chefs, chefs are now making planned forward dishes tasty and trendy. So before Christmas, I took my meat-loving husband, sorry to say, Peter, took him to a diner in LA, and he loved his burger so much, he couldn't even tell it was all vegan. Three years ago, this room was filled with individual change makers. Now, we make up a web of powerful networks and collaborations across disciplines, sectors and borders. In the big picture, though, we are still outliers. And the progress at large is nowhere even close to the scale and pace we need to reach our global goals by 2030. Yet, I've never been more confident that we are on the right track. After the recent US Paxit, climate action may not stand out as an obvious success story for global collaboration. But I believe there are some key takeaways from the process leading up to the Paris Agreement that are relevant for the food system. First, we needed a common understanding of the problem. So the UN established an international science panel, the IPCC, and this allowed for 195 countries to sign up for the two-degree target. And now, progress is escalating, regardless of single defectors. Of course, it's not all smooth sailing from here, but Finally, renewable energy is becoming a truly competitive alternative. It's already creating more jobs and, and attracting more investments than fossil fuels, with a growth rate exceeding even the most optimistic scenarios. In many ways, food is much more complex than carbon. It's not only about emissions, Food has to deliver on multiple targets across disciplines. We have no IPCC-like institution for the food system challenges. However, collaborations like the Eat Lancet Commission are now closing in on the two-degree equivalent for food. And clear targets will enable us to further align our efforts and map out the most efficient ways forward. 2030 is just 13 years from now. In that time, we will have to shift food from being a cause to becoming a cure. I know we can do it, but only if we work together. And look around you. Look around you, we are all here. We have the regulators and the innovators, the business leaders and the thought leaders. We have the dreamers and we have the doers. And according to SDG 17, we are no longer opponents or competitors. We are all team players. Together, we can change the system to make healthy, sustainable food accessible and affordable. And with chefs on board, it can be simply irresistible. Now, we have two days, busy days in front of us to move this agenda forward. But before we get carried away by facts and figures and global goals, Let's remind ourselves what food is really about. It's about what brings families together. It's about the tastes that define our cultures and the smells that turn a house into a home. It's what we serve to celebrate and what we swallow in defeat. And it's what creates memories and forms bonds that can last a lifetime. 
I never really cared that much about food. But I simply love the magic it creates when people gather around a table. And if our solutions brings both purpose and passion, we can make a brighter future, not just for some, but for everyone, every day. Once again, welcome to the Eat Stockholm Food Forum. Thank you for taking part, for taking action, and for taking the lead.